Gauss-Jordan elimination takes Gaussian elimination to the next step. In Gaussian elimination, we take a matrix, we find its pivots, and we make sure that everything below all of those pivots is a zero. This matrix is already in echelon form, which means if it didn't start out looking like this, then elementary row operations have been performed on it so that each of its pivots has zeros below. That's called forward elimination. And we're not gonna do the back substitution part with this one. Um, we're going to take it to the next step, as it were. We're going to perform Gauss-Jordan elimination. Gauss-Jordan elimination will put this matrix into reduced echelon form. To be a bit more formal about it, given a matrix, to put it into reduced echelon form using Gauss-Jordan elimination, the first step is to perform forward elimination to put it in, into echelon form. And that's what we've got uh, to, right from the very beginning with this. And so we don't have to do step one here because it's already been done for us. Step two is to scale the pivots. What's meant by that is to essentially multiply each row by the number that will cause the first non-zero entry in that row to become a one. So in the first row in the current matrix, I need to multiply that row one by one over four to turn the first entry in that row into a one. So I'm gonna write that as one fourth row one becomes row one. And I'll write that underneath. So one fourth of four is one. One fourth of negative one is negative one fourth. There's no getting around the fractions in this case. I have to make this first entry here a one. And why that's the case will become uh, evident as we move along here near the end of the process. But but the the procedure requires that we get all of our pivots to become ones. That's our step two. Our third entry here is a six. When I multiply that by one fourth, I get six over four, which is three over two. And when I divide nine by four, I get nine fourths. Okay, so for my first row, I have accomplished the tasks, the task of scaling its pivot. I'm gonna do the same thing now for row two, except that row two already has a, a, a pivot of one. So I don't actually need to do anything with row two. I'm gonna just copy it down. I have zero, one, two, seven. And then with row three, I need my entry here, which is currently negative 17. I need that to be a one. So I'm gonna take row three and I'm going to multiply it by negative one over 17. And the result of that multiplication on each entry, I'm going to put into row three. All right, negative 1 17th times 0, negative 1 17th times 0. Negative 1 17th times 17 is positive 1. And as it happens, 17 goes into 51 three times. So I've completed step here by scaling the pivots so that they all become 1s. Now that my pivots are all 1s, step 3 is to perform elementary row operations on the rightmost pivot. That's this one here. Um, so that all the entries above it are zero. And we're going to do that by finding a number we, we can multiply by one so that when we add it to two, the two becomes the, the entry in this position becomes a zero and so on. So let's do that next. What number can I multiply by one so that when I add it to two, I get zero? And let's see that, I'll call that number A. So that I have A plus two equals zero. Therefore, a equals negative 2. And what I want to do then in this step is to take every entry in row 3. Let's move that over a little bit. Take every entry in row 3, multiply it by negative 2, add that to row 2, and that's going to become my new row 2. So when I multiply this entry in row 3, by negative two, I get zero. And when I add that to the entry in row two, which is also zero, I get zero. So my new entry for row two position one is zero. Doing the same thing here gives me negative two times zero plus one is one. 
then I get negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And the last one for this part is negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6, negative 6 plus 7 is 1. So I get a 1 here. Okay, so now I have a zero in that position, but I also need a zero in this position here. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this row one because it's going to be the wrong row one. It's just, I just copied it down from here. So I have a record of those entries here. Um, it's going to, what I'm about to do next is I'm going to change that row one. So let's get rid of those entries. And what I need to do now is I need to find a number that when I multiply it by one, and add it to 3 halves, something times 1 plus 3 halves, um, that that results in 0. So let's put, uh, uh, let's call it A again. So what I'm looking for is a solution to the equation A plus 3 halves equals 0, which means A is going to be negative 3 halves. So I need to take negative 3 halves, multiply it by everything in row 3, add the result to row 1, and that's going to become my new row 1. All right, so let's, let's do that. In row 3, my first entry is 0. 3 halves times 0 is 0. And when I, let's do that up here. 3 halves times 0 is 0. When I add that to 1, I get 0 plus 1, which is 1. Then I have negative 3 halves times 0 plus negative 1 half. Negative 3 halves plus negative 1 half is negative 4 halves, which is negative 2. Then I have negative 3 halves times 1, which is negative 3 halves. Add that to 3 halves, and you get 0. And lastly, I have negative 3 halves times 3, which is negative 9 halves. Negative 9 halves plus 4. Well, let's see. Negative 9 halves plus, I said 4. I meant 9 fourths. Let's multiply this by 2 over 2. I get negative 18 plus 9 all over 4, which is negative 9 over 4. Negative 9 fourths. I just noticed I made a mistake down here in with this entry here. Uh, negative 9, where, where am I? Negative 3 halves. Negative 3 halves times 0 is 0. 0 plus negative 1 fourth is negative 1 fourth, not negative 2. So I'm going to change that entry. That should be negative 1 fourth. There we go. So I have caused all of the entries above the rightmost pivot to become 0. Step 4 is to repeat step 3 and all the other pivots, which means that we want to turn, we're looking at uh, this matrix down here now, we want to turn this pivot, we want to have the number above that, we want that to be a 0 as well. So I need to find a number I can multiply by 1 so that when I add it to negative 1 fourth, I get 0. So I'll just do my arithmetic off to the side here. What number, when you multiply it by 1 and then add that to negative 1 fourth, gives you 0? And this time I'm going to, I'll still use a, I'm going to be solving the equation a minus a fourth equals 0. So a must equal 1 fourth. So I need to multiply everything in row 2, because that's the pivot I'm working with now, everything in row 2 by 1 fourth and add it to the entry in row 1. Typically, I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to leave the row operations that I have established, uh, the row operation, this row operation here and this one right here, but I'm going to erase the arithmetic that goes with them just so that um, it's not quite so messy when, when we're all done here. I have a little bit more room, room to work. So what I'm going to do now is record what I need to do in my next step, which is to take row 2 and multiply it by 1 fourth and add that to row 1 and that's going to become my new row 1. And that's going to, now I'm going to erase this arithmetic and I'm going to need to do this next step. I'm going to try to squeeze it in 
all the way up here. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, I've copied down rows two and three because those aren't going to change now. But I'm going to use row two, row two. I'm going to multiply every entry in row two by one fourth and add it to row one. So if I take row two, this first entry here, and multiply it by one fourth, I get zero. One fourth times zero is zero. Plus one is one. And then the next uh, entry is 1, so I take 1 fourth times 1 and add it to, which is 1 fourth, and add it to negative 1 fourth, which is 0. Then I take 1 fourth times 0, which is 0, and add it to 0, which is 0. And I'll take 1 fourth times 1, which is 1 fourth, and add it to negative 9 fourths, which gives me negative 8 fourths, which is negative 2. And that is the end of step four, because I've managed to get every uh, every pivot to have a zero above it, right? Have nothing but zeros above it. Step one was to get uh, zeros below all the pivots, right? This, this entry here is the zero below this pivot. Both of these entries are the zeros below that pivot. Step two is to scale the pivots, which we had done by this stage as well. These are all now ones. Um, and then step four was to repeat so that all the entries above a pivot were zero. And we've done that now as well. The textbook that the class is using for which I'm making this video has a step five here. But the step five just says stop when the entries above all pivots are zeros. Well, that's a little bit redundant because step three says perform row operations. Uh, until the entries above the last pivot are all zero, which we've done. Step four says to repeat on all the other pivots, which we've now also done. So we don't really need a step five to tell us to stop. We've done the things we we're asked to do in four steps. So I'm not gonna bother to write step five down here. So this uh, matrix is now in reduced echelon form. And that is the result of performing Gauss-Jordan elimination. Start by doing Gaussian elimination, uh, the the forward uh, the forward elimination step, and then instead of doing back substitution, you scale the pivots and make sure all the entries above each pivot is a, a zero. You might well ask, why go to all that trouble? Well, once again, I want you to remember that matrices come from. Uh, systems of linear equations. I can take a system of linear equations and just pull out the coefficients and turn that into a matrix. So I can do the same thing in reverse here. I can say that that this matrix can be rethought of, I guess, as 1x1. Oops. Not xx, x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3. I'm making my x's way too small. Getting ahead of myself writing subscripts here. 0x3 equals negative 2. And that 0x1 plus 1x2 plus 0x3 equals 1. And 0x1 plus 0x3 x2 plus 1x3 equals 3. And of course, the easy um, interpretation of that is that x1 equals negative 2, because 0x2 and 0x3 are just 0. And x2 equals 1, and x3 equals 3. So we have then uh, x1 equals negative 2, x2 equals 1, and x3 equals 3. And the, the, the nice thing here is that by making sure that all of the pivots are 1s, we're saying we have one copy of x1, one copy of x2, one copy of x3. Because it's an echelon form, we don't have to worry about the entries in the, uh, in the positions before those coefficients before those pivot uh, values. And because it's in reduced echelon form, 
we don't have to worry about the entries after either. So we end up with just 1x1 equals negative 2, or x1 equals negative 2. Um, I want to highlight something here, and I think the best way to do that is just with another color of highlighter. Um, notice that in this form, in this the, the form that this matrix is in, because it's in reduced echelon form, the pivots are all ones. Everything below every pivot is a zero. Everything above every pivot is a zero. Because it's in that form, this last row here is the answers. Right? Because it's in reduced echelon form, I can look at that last column. I think I said row, I'm sorry. That last column is the answers. Um, notice that the 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 reduced echelon form means that this first entry is the x1 entry, then the x2 entries in row two, the x3 entries in row three. And because of that, we can look at this and just say x1 is negative 2, x2 is 1, x3 is 3. It's just that simple. So we can take that and write it as a list of solutions like this, or depending on how you're going to use it, you might just take the, the numbers from this column here and use them kind of as is. We'll see that kind of play out later on in the, in the course. I sort of cheated here. Uh, I added, I included the, the second topic in this section, solving a system of linear equations using Gauss-Jordan Gauss elimination. I sort of sneaked that in on you. Um, but that last, what, minute and a half is really, that's all there is to that piece. The point of using Gauss-Jordan elimination is that we can take our final result, a matrix in reduced echelon form, and just pull from the last column, assuming that this is an augmented matrix, which this one is, uh, we can just pull from that last column the solutions to the system. So that's the, the main benefit for using Gauss-Jordan elimination. We'll also see that although this is an augmented matrix, which means we could put a, a vertical line there, um, We'll, we'll also see that this could be the result of matrix multiplication, in which case the result is, it's nice to have that in that final form because then we can just pull the solution.